like standing on every street corner and start shouting, you don't understand what's going to happen to this country if we don't start funding research, finding a cure. Because my grandchildren are going to pay the price if we don't do something now. My name is Miriam Marquez and I'm 67 years old. And I knew that there was Alzheimer's in my family, but I never, but because I was, you know, in, in my uh, 60s, early 60s, I thought I wasn't going to get it. It was a Friday and I was on my way home. Um, I came to a four-way stop. I lived in Stanwood and I came to a four-way stop near my home. And all of a sudden, I didn't know whether to turn left or right or go straight. I was only 62 years old when I, you know, got the information, when I, re when I learned I had the pre in one gene. I knew that I could continue working. But I thought, uh, you know, if I only have a limited amount of time left, do I really want to be working? I knew it would affect me financially, uh, but I made the decision to do that. The main reason I did it was I have four children. I've got seven grandchildren. And I I am a warrior. I mean, I've been an attorney, and, and I, I was born this way, an advocate. And I want to do all I can for the sake of my children and my grandchildren and for everyone else. We've got to find a cure for Alzheimer's. <laughs> Miriam is someone who takes life straight on. Nothing slows her down or, or, or deters her from her passion to make a difference. She can't ignore and does not ignore the fact that she has Alzheimer's, but she doesn't let it rob her of the fullness of, of her life. She, she really is, is on a mission to share her story and make people more aware, not only of the impact of the disease, but of the different ways in which the Alzheimer's Association can lead them to, to help and hope. Well, I'm on the board of directors uh, with the Alzheimer's Association the, uh, here in Seattle, and uh, I'm the first um, person with a uh, diagnosed to sit on the board. On the national level also, I am the ambassador to for the Alzheimer's Association to Senator Patty Murray. I feel like I'm doing something. I feel like I'm making a difference. Alzheimer's disease is where cancer was back in the 50s and the 60s. No one even said the word. They would go see or they would whisper. Alzheimer's is still in the closet. I know people close to me who have Alzheimer's. And uh, they, they don't want people to know. They hide it. Alzheimer's has been this uh, disease that carries a lot of stigma with it and a lot of shame with it. I think it has a lot to do with this idea, even going back to Descartes, I think therefore I am, and this idea that, you know, we associate our identity so much with our minds and being able to be cognitively astute. The sense that you lose your identity um, if you maybe can't, if you have trouble thinking. So for a lot of people, Living with dementia can mean this sense of isolation, partially because of the stigma, partially because uh, it may be harder to engage in things that you've done throughout life. 
being around other people living with memory loss, you start connecting and realizing, wow, you know, I'm not alone. Oh, yeah. um. There are some amazing, abiding friendships that are formed in our support groups. And every Monday morning, we have a group of early stage individuals and their care partners who walk at the Woodland Park Zoo. And I was so taken by how much respect and affection these folks had developed for one another. There are best practices that I follow. Best practices include eating a Mediterranean diet, which means very high in uh, vegetables and fruits and grains, um, with little fish or little meat, very little. Staying socially active, very important, and exercise. So there's some really potent evidence that certain lifestyle factors uh, can be uh, really powerful in improving uh, your chances of, of not getting Alzheimer's disease before you die. Reducing your risk of vascular damage seems to reduce your risk of Alzheimer's disease. So the most potent lifestyle factor that we know of to reduce risk of Alzheimer's disease that you can do anything about is uh, exercise. And if you have the disease, uh, exercise is also helpful. This whole notion of activity, physically active, mentally active, socially active, very important. It's not going to cure Alzheimer's, it's not going to prevent it, but it might. The right lifestyle, and Miriam is a wonderful testament to this, might slow the progression of the disease and preserve quality of life for a longer period of time. I keep a diary and I'm keenly aware of my decline. Um, I noticed a decline last fall and you know it's incremental but because I'm so keenly aware of myself I, 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 I know what's going on. And I'm a fighter. I'm a survivor. I have survived many, many things. I'm not sure now that I'm going to survive this. That I am going to plunge into dementia. And I'll be honest. I have no desire and no intention to be in, a, be in a situation where someone has to wipe my butt. I just can't imagine going there. I love traveling. I just got back from two weeks in Kenya and Tanzania. It was an amazing, an amazing trip. Did Hank tell you Dan wants you? I'm on my way. Good morning, Jake. Good morning, Cass. I can no longer memorize lines, uh, well, at least long lines. And that breaks my heart because I prefer live theater. Past couple of years I've been doing short films. The last thing I've done was there is, it's a web series called Still, where I get murdered. <laughs> but if you know you have a limited amount of time left. You make a decision. 
You are you going to become depressed and cry and be angry and throw things and be miserable? That's one choice. The other choice is to say, I'm going to take every single minute, hour, day, week, month that I've got left and squeeze everything wonderful out of it that I can. And that's what I've chosen to do. My family, my children, my dog, <laughs> um, music, art, laughter, friends, companionship, 